I just always wanted, like, whether it was through advocacy or, you know, just anything, I just wanted to, like, make an impact in some sort of way and like not necessarily like be a famous person I don't want to you know I, I don't want to be like a famous person or like a singer or whatever but I wanted to be you know like some somebody that people would remember my name you know even if it wasn't like the whole world or anything like that I just wanted you know some people to like read about me I guess and be like wow like that's a cool chick you know like she's doing things From Fiori Communications, it's How I Got Here, a show of inspiring stories from Tallahassee area leaders, business owners, and neighbors, all the challenges, opportunities, inspirations, the twists and turns of life that led them to where they are today. Everyone has a story worth telling, and I am really grateful that we get to bring a few of them to you. I truly have been changed by my conversations with these amazing people, and I'm confident you will be too. I'm Dave Fiore, and on this episode, I speak with Madison Zabala, owner of Tallahassee Picnic, a luxury pop-up picnic service she bought with her twin sister Mackenzie just after graduating from Leon High School. The Tallahassee native with strong roots in nearby Hosford also works as a bank teller, is a college student, and just celebrated her one-year wedding anniversary with husband Ish. The 20-year-old homeowner has experienced a lot in her young life, and was recently recognized by Roland Publishing and 850 Magazine with the 2021 Marjorie Turnbull Pinnacle Award for Young Women of Extraordinary Promise. Madison's parents say she has always had a vision for her life, and she has proven that she will work as hard as necessary to make it happen. She is currently pursuing a degree in Communication Science and Disorders from FSU and hopes to one day be a speech pathologist. We started our conversation by talking about growing up in both Tallahassee and Liberty County. So you're a native of Tallahassee. I am. Right? Yes. Okay, now, I also see Hosford as listed as a place that you were born. On my Facebook? I wasn't born there. I was born here at TMH. Okay. Um, But I kind of grew up in Liberty County, Hosford specifically. And, I mean, Hosford has two stoplights an elementary school, two gas stations, a post office, and most recently a Dollar General. That's um, a big step. I know, right? We were all very excited about it. I bet. Um, so I guess I kind of like up until fifth grade because my family has a property there and a property in Tallahassee. Okay. So we kind of flip-flopped um, back and forth, you know, whether that would be one parent having a job in Tallahassee and the other in Liberty County. Um, and then that's where all my dad's family is from, too. So, like, we all grew, we call it the yard because um, it's just, I, I don't know how many acres it is, but it's a pretty decent plot of land. Right. Um, our house is in one corner. My Meemaw's house is in one corner. And then another corner with another aunt uncle's house. And then, you know, same thing, another aunt uncle's house. So, I think I listed Hosford on Facebook as like where I'm from because probably. Ninety percent of my Facebook friends are from Liberty County, just my dad's family and stuff. That's right. really the only reason I have Facebook is for my Meemaw and my Liberty County folks. So. They don't want you. <laughs> you don't want them to think that you went big time and forgetting about Hosford oh, right now that you're a Tallahassee. Not person. at all. Right. Yeah, and it's kind of funny because my family's like growing up. My family always called my sister and I like the Tallahassee girls, like you guys are city girls. And I'm just like, really? Because the people here in the city think I'm a country girl. So (laughs) that's really funny you say that. It's all about perspective, right? Oh, definitely. Mm -hmm. All right. So you spent after what fifth grade, the rest of your time you grew up in Tallahassee? So yeah, in fifth grade, my dad got a job at Dermatology Associates of Tallahassee. um, And it's actually like right down the road from where we live. Like his commute is like less than a mile. (laughs) Um, So we were going to Governor's Charter Academy, my twin sister and I. And coming from, you know, like we kind of rotated through a lot of different schools. um, But like our main school all throughout childhood had been Hosford Elementary. And, you know, it's in the middle of nowhere. And you kind of grew up with the same people, you know, in, in your class, the same people you go to church with. 
And so going from that to like people we had no idea, we've never met them in our lives. And, you know, me and her didn't look like anyone else. We didn't talk like anyone else. Back then I had a very strong Southern accent. Tell me about your family. You have a mom and dad. I do. Right? They're okay. great. <laughs> okay. So tell me about them and growing up as a kid, just your family dynamics and what it was like for you at that that point in your life. I have amazing parents, and I don't think it could get much better than them. I mean, there was definitely a reason why I got placed on this earth with them. My um, mom and dad are both you know, in the nicest way, the most polite way possible, a little older. My mom had us when she was 40, and I think my dad was 36 because they're four years apart. Okay. Um, and they had actually been trying for 13 years to conceive. Wow. Um, and so they like to call us their little miracle babies because right after my mom got kicked out of IVF because back then – um, once you turn 40, you know, mm. then you got kicked out. Too high risk. Exactly. Um, I think nowadays it's a little different, but um, back then that's the way it was. And a couple months later, just naturally, they conceived us. So, I mean, it really was a yeah. miracle. So I feel like the way they raised us kind of reflected that, you know, um, right. not that. How, what do you mean by that? Well, <laughs> Well, so not that my sister and I were spoiled in any way whatsoever, because we definitely weren't, but my mom specifically always put emphasis on making memories over material things. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times for Christmas, instead of like, oh, you know, a new bike or whatever, it which like some Christmases, like I got a new bike for sure. But other times it would be like, you know, we've got season passes to Disney and we're going to go down, you know, like every weekend we can. Um, so Mackenzie and I got a lot of opportunities to travel and make those experiences with our family compared to, you know, some of the other kids our age. So, um, and I don't know if that's, that comes with having older parents or, you know, whatever, but. They wanted to make the most of their time with you. I think right? so. Yeah. And, and that's something I've really only thought about in that way like as I've gotten older and I've kind of realized like oh you know my parents are getting older like what in the world you know um and I, I and I try to you know make those initiate those memories with them now so like you know going up it was like them surprising us with a trip now I like to surprise them like oh let's go let's go take a trip here let's go do this and I think that's something I'll definitely carry on with my kids too mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So you graduated from Leon High School. I did. Right in 2020. In the middle of the panorama. I was going to say, so you were the first class impacted by, or graduating class to be impacted by COVID. Yeah, we were. So what was, what was that time like? What was that? How did you deal with all that upheaval in your life just turning on a dime like that when you think you're cruising toward high school graduation and all of a sudden this comes out of nowhere? <sighs> yeah, that was a actually a very busy time in my life. I think for most people, it was like kind of a pause, but my life just kind of got busier and busier and busier. I was working um, in a medical setting. And I mean, luckily, I we didn't have to shut down and I didn't lose my job, unlike a lot of people. And what were you doing? Um, I was, and I actually still do this, just not and not as much, but I was the medical records and billing specialists for a chiropractic office here. Okay. We were seeing more patients than ever. I do all the billing for four doctors and then, you know, add on medical records. So I was working like 10 hour days, five days a week. And, you know, sometimes it was 12 hour days because our office opens at 6 a.m. Um, and we just had a lot of turnaround and stuff like that with different people, mm. um, in different job positions. So I had to get cross-trained um, to be a chiropractic assistant. So then I started working the floor, which is like completely different than, right. than you know, kind of the more analytical side. Um, so that was right around that time of my graduation. I was like doing both. And um, I think at that time oh. I was – only doing like two periods at Leon. Mm -hmm. It was like Govan Econ and a TA position, which like obviously those were 
the TA was just not happening anymore. Right. Yeah. And then the GovEnecon went online, and then I was all my TCC classes went online, went on Zoom, um, which gave me a little more. Because you were dual enrolled. Yeah. Like, so I, yeah. it gave me like more hours to work, and I was also doing that. Um, and I mean, I was bummed out that I didn't get to walk across the stage because at that time, Mr. Billy Upting was the um, principal of Leon, and I'm like Billy's biggest fan. I love Mr. Upting. So I was like, I'm going to get to, you know, shake his hand and accept my (laughs) diploma from Mr. Upting. Um, And that didn't happen. I did it through a drive-thru. We had a drive-up graduation, which, by the way, they did an amazing job. Was that at the Civic Center? Yes, they did. And there was, like, fireworks at the end and everything. I mean, I really feel like the school board did an absolute bang-up job with, you know, the time that it was. Right. All right, so while at Leon, we've discussed this already, that you were dual enrolled at Tallahassee Community College. Right. So what led to that decision to accelerate your education in that way? Um, Definitely my parents. My parents have always pushed Mackenzie and I to be the best we can be and to, you know, nothing short of excellence. So... Ever since probably, like, middle school, my mom was like, okay, you're going to go to BYU. Like, literally, my first email was BYU bound, the number two, at (laughs) AOL.com. Yeah. You can still send me an email. I'm probably not going to check it, but that's what it was. Right. Um, So that is one way to start you on a path, Yeah, you know, and um, so we always knew that we were going to go to college and just always knew the steps that we needed to take to get there. So, I mean, and especially my mom, she was always in the know. She was always on the email list. So I guess she got an email or something about dual enrollment and was like, I think this would be really great for you guys to do. Um, And I was all about it, you know. Like um, I was – I've been working probably since I was like 14. So Mm -hmm. I got a job at Publix when I was 15 and was starting to save for college and stuff like that. And I was like, free college? Heck yeah. So you've mentioned church and your faith a couple times now. So tell me the role of that in your life up to this point and, you know, how it influences your decision moving forward from here. Right. So I grew up Latter-day Saint. Um, There's three churches here in Tallahassee. There's one on Stadium Drive, which is the one we grew up going to. Um, And then the one on Buck Lake is the newest one. And then the one on Thomasville Road. Right. I'm not really like as active now as I'd like to be. But because, you know, just life is busy. But growing up, Latter-day Saint, you know, or Mormon, as most people know, but we don't really use that term anymore. Okay. You know, as some people would think it's really strict. You know, you can't drink alcohol. Um, There's it's called the word of wisdom. So, you know, just all things in moderation. Right. Like not too much caffeine, not too much red meat or whatever, you know, just living, well, that a, makes sense for yeah, just living yeah. a healthy lifestyle. Like right. people want to make it into this thing that's like, oh my gosh, you can't drink sweet tea or you can't drink caffeinated whatever. And it's like, yeah, I can still drink a Coca-Cola if I want to, you know, like it's not like what people make it seem. Right. Um, And then, you know, just like we call it the law of chastity, you know, other people would call it like, I guess like abstinence or whatever, you know, like waiting till marriage. Right. Um, Just like traditional like normal Christian things like that. Like that was, you know, our childhood. Like we went to church every Sunday and back then it was three hours every Sunday, which like. That's a a long time. That's a big time commitment. Yeah. Like even now looking back on it, I was like, wow, I don't know how I did that. Cause like (laughs) normally now I'd be working or something. Um, You're working in addition to going to school. You're also working at Publix, mm -hmm. right? So what were you, what was your job at Publix? What were you doing there? I started out as a bagger. And then I think once I turned 16, I got promoted to cashier. And so then that's kind of where I stayed until I quit. And which Publix, did you work at multiple Publixes or which one were you at? No, I was at the Bradfordville one, Okay, which is kind of funny because it's like literally the farthest from like, because, you know, I'm kind of from um, the east side of town, like where Costco is. And, And I got accepted at the Bradfordville one, which is where... My, my husband and his family are from that side of town, and that's where I met him. Okay. So, yeah, let's get into that story. I, I read where you said you locked eyes bagging groceries. Bagging groceries, baby. Yeah. So, <laughs> so you know, it's like, what is it, like a, um, 
a Hallmark movie where you you like from three checkout lanes oh, apart, no. you just catch each other's I attention? I definitely or? used a bit of hyperbole in that sentence. Um, okay. Yeah. I mean, I like to say we locked eyes over bagging but groceries. You may have a different story. Um, yeah, especially because there was a bit of an age difference then. But I will say I was – so I was walking in for, like, my interview or something or, like, training or whatever, and I saw him because he was a cashier, and I was like, oh, my goodness. I was like, I would date him, you know, in my head. I'm thinking that. This is, like, the first um, time you're walking in there. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah, yeah, either the first or second time, and I just noticed him, right. and I was like, oh, he's a cutie patootie. So then, you know, I did my training, whatever, and I don't think we actually, like, met until I was, like, actually working and, like, had to bag groceries for him. Right. So I think that's kind of where oh, so I got he them. was the he was the cashier, he you were the bagger. He was the cashier, and I was the bagger. So don't baggers kind of float around a little bit? You can kind of we choose the, yeah, the aisles so, to work on or the lanes? Well, You could put yourself there if you wanted to. I could, and I did so strategically. Okay. I, would, I did a lot of switching with people. I'd be <laughs> like, hey, you go over here because I want to go there. And what is his name? His name is Isham, but everybody calls him Ish, Ish. for short, okay. I-S-H. Um, so did he, I assume that he was also interested when, I mean, how did you know that you were interested in each other, other than the magical look over the bagging? Well, so there's about a five and a half year age gap between us. Okay. So I was I'm assuming 16. he's older. Oh, yes. So I okay. was 16 and he was, oh, math. Yeah, 21. Okay. Um. Or he was 20 and he was about to turn 21. So we were just really great friends. Like, um, he loves to talk. He likes to say that I was, like, kind of mean to him and ignored him. I was there to do a job, okay? We're not supposed to talk while a customer is there. So he was trying to, like, you know, get my attention and talk to me. He was like, yeah, I was trying to annoy you because obviously I thought you didn't like me. And I was like, okay, don't know how that makes sense, but, you know, boys. So at that age. Right, boys. Um, <laughs> so, um, but, you know, we did talk, like, on breaks and, like, getting carts and stuff. And so we were getting carts one day, and it was probably a couple months of us knowing each other, we had like hung out like with our other coworkers outside of work, and um, I so yeah I won an award, the 2018 Youth Energy Innovator of the Year through Rethink Energy Florida, and I actually interned with them my freshman year, for my work as Leon's Peace Jam president. Congratulations! Thank you. Um, and I needed a date to go with me to accept mm. this award because um, they're like, you can bring somebody. And I was like, well, I don't want to show up. So you demanded. asked him out on your first date. I did. Um, <laughs> Wasn't a date, though. He was your. He was. Yeah. He wouldn't call it a date. Is. I would call it a date, but he wouldn't call it a date just because of that age difference. Right. So um, we were getting carts and I was like, OK, I have a really important question to ask you. And he was like, OK, like, shoot. And I'm like, do you believe in climate change? And he, in his head, he's like, oh, my gosh, do I answer truthfully? Because, he, cause, you know, he's thinking I'm like this southern girl. He was like, like, what do I say to this chick, you know? Right. And so he answered truthfully, which was yes. And um, I was like, great. I need you to go with me to accept this award. Um, because, you know, the work I did, it was for environmental um, advocacy. So, so the evening went well? It did. It went well. It was actually the first time he met my parents, and they loved him. Because they the were bed. with you, too, to accept the award? Yes, and Mackenzie was, too. Okay. After a couple months of us just being best friends, I was actually interested in another guy, and I basically sat him down. And I was like, listen, I've got these other guys, and we're best friends. I know you like me or else you wouldn't be sticking around. Mm -hmm. And I like you. So um, you need to make up your mind, buddy. And he did. And then we started dating in July of 2018. You're, you just had your first year anniversary, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, congratulations on that. Thank you. So now you're an official old couple. You're not newlyweds anymore. No, I need to change my bio because I think I still have in there like recently married. <laughs> it's still in the big picture. It's still pretty it's recently still pretty married, recent. right? 
after you had been at Publix three years or so, Mm -hmm. right? You decided to make a change. Yeah. So I was like doing both. I would like, I would go to school from like 8 to 2.30 or whenever it went out. And then I would work at Magnolia from like 3 to 5. And then I would go and I would work a closing shift at Publix. And then in January of last year, um, I made the decision to go full-time at TC Federal Bank just because I just needed a change, you know? I have yeah. been doing the same thing for so long, and I really, you know, attribute a lot of my professional skills and knowledge from that job at Magnolia Wellness Center Um because I started it at such a young age, and I was just learned so much, and I took those skills with me to TC Federal Bank. Um, and I still, every now and then, I still do, you know, some things for Magnolia on the okay. side. Hey, everybody. Just a quick reminder that this episode is brought to you by Fiori Communications. Just like people, every business has a story to tell. And we've been helping our clients tell their story since 2001, because who you are as a company is just as important as what you do. To learn more about how telling your story can make a difference in your business, visit FioriCommunications.com. Thanks again for listening. Now back to the show. According to the resume, which I now find is not as reliable as I thought it was going to be. I know. But that's okay. That... It says you started at the bank in January of 2021. Right. Does that sound right? Mm-hmm. And then in April of that year, just a couple months later, the opportunity came up for Tallahassee Picnic. Yeah. So that's a, a sudden change out of the blue, and that's kind of your main business, I'm guessing, kind of aspirations and plans now. So sounds super exciting. I've seen, you know, your Instagram photos. It looks just awesome. Yeah. So uh, tell me about Tallahassee Picnic, how that came out, how that came about with you and your sister and how you made all that happen. Right. So I was a couple months into my new job at the bank working full time and it was actually during finals week um, in April and um, Mackenzie came to me and she was like, hey, um, Kate Beal, who is the events coordinator at the Edison, um, she has this business. And I had actually um, modeled for Peachtree Boutique because Mackenzie does all their pictures. Um, she owns Kenzie G Photography. Um, and so I had actually already seen the setup because Kate, it was like kind of a collaboration thing. Mm-hmm. Kate did like a Valentine's Day picnic setup um, and, you know, we modeled the clothes and took pictures and all that. So I'd actually already seen it. I didn't even know like what it was. And Mackenzie's like, do you remember that like Valentine's Day shoot we did? And I was like, yeah. And she was like, okay, so Kate wants to sell us her business, which is doing those picnics. And I was like, oh my gosh, how cool. Yeah. Um, and she was kind of telling me like, you know, some other people are interested, but Kate really wanted Mackenzie and I to do it because obviously, you know, Mackenzie would have the picture side. I was doing freelance social media. So like I kind of had that side. And then Mackenzie and I have just both been very creative and like the events aspects, like Mm -hmm. at church growing up, we always did all of the little socials and like, you know, if anybody was pregnant, we threw them a baby shower and stuff like that. So you enjoyed that. Oh yeah. Love it. Still do. Obviously. Yeah. Um, So when she brought that to me, I was like, why not? And so literally by the end of finals week, we were signing the papers to buy this business. And I really had no idea what it was going to be at the time. I just thought like, oh, a fun little side hustle, you know, right? (laughs) like I needed something else um, (laughs) after taking five classes and planning a wedding and whatever. But that's a huge deal. I mean, buying an existing business with someone else, having a partner, which can complicate things too. Oh, yeah. Was there any part of that that you were scared about or were you just excited or what were you feeling through all of that? I guess I was just feeling mostly excitement. Um, Mackenzie and I, like growing up, we always knew we wanted to own a business together, which is kind of funny now that it's just mine. But um, (laughs) and she has her own business. But um, so she's not involved with it anymore. No, I bought her out in October of last year because she was just getting so busy with photography. Um that she really couldn't handle both. Um, so I bought her out. Okay. So now it's just mine. Um, but, you know, we did build it together. Um, and so that process was 
extremely fun. Mm. Like we were getting all the inventory and I remember moving it into our tiny town home. Like our, our guest bedroom was full of picnic stuff. Right. Um, and just kind of booking clients and stuff like that and doing it together was really fun. And then in the summer of last year, we just blew up. We got featured in the Tallahassee Democrat. And at, then after that, it was like picnics almost every day. And then this past um, winter, we got featured in A50 Business Magazine. Right. And so ever since, you know, that, it's been like – crazy. I mean, I think we have like five picnics this weekend and we're doing the Cleaver and Cork yeah. Food and Wine Festival. TCC. I'm teaching a master class, which I'm like, wow. what am I going to tell these people? Um, so tell tell me about the business. What is Tallahassee Picnic? What services do you offer? How does it all work? Okay. So we're a luxury picnic company. So if you think about your regular Joe Schmo picnic, you know, you got your blanket and got your you little know, wicker basket. Your little wicker basket. So we take that ordinary picnic picnic and we just completely elevate it. So instead of a blanket, it's a vintage rug. And then we've got a low rise table. Um, it's, it like folds out super cute. Um, we've got a shade umbrella. It's usually our signature fringe umbrella, kind of boho from World Market. Right. Um, it was like really all the craze when all this started. Then we decorate the little table with, you know, like fresh florals, like a complete place setting. So like vintage glassware, linen napkins. um, And then we have like tapered candles. Um, And then there's... So you have all that stuff? You've built an inventory of options? Oh, yeah. It basically consumes my house. Um, (laughs) And then usually there's like a little chalkboard sign that has a message. So most people are doing it for like an anniversary or a date night or a birthday. So it'll be like, you know, happy anniversary, happy birthday, whatever. And we've done actually three proposal picnics. So those were really fun. Wow. So how do you surprise somebody with a proposal when all that stuff's laid out there? I mean, they're going to know something. So you have to get really creative. So this past one we did, um, it was around the same time of her birthday. So it was like a belated birthday thing. Mm. So on. So um, she believed that. She did. Okay. So when she was walking, when she and him were walking up, the sign said, happy birthday, Jayla, which is her name. Um, and then as they turned the corner, the other side of the sign said, will you marry me? Mm, and nice. he got down on one knee and everything. But it was kind of funny because she walked up and she looked at it, started bawling. <laughs> and I was like, this is a great sign. Yeah. Um, and then awesome. she she was just st- like – standing there crying like in shock I guess that you know he had like done all this for her um and then so he like he had already walked himself to the other side and he's just standing there and he's like he's like come on babe let's take a picture because you know there was a photographer there um and he was like all right like let's come around you know and so then she comes around and she's like she's crying she's hugging him she's like oh my gosh I can't believe you did all this for me and um then he's like look at the sign and she's like what what? And she's like, he's like, look at the sign. And so then she looks at the sign and he's getting down on one knee and then just. So she started crying, didn't even, didn't even see the sign yet. Didn't even see the sign. She, I guess she was just very touched that he would do that for her birthday. And so I'm crying, like filming this behind a tree. Um, That's awesome. So yeah, we usually, a lot of times we have to get very creative and, you know, do something like that, like make them think it's for something else. And then so you do, you do everything but the food, right? The only food we offer is charcuterie and dessert boards. Okay. So a lot of the times people add that on. And then we also have kind of like a catering add-on. So, well, not really. We can pick up catering okay. for you and bring it to your picnic. Right. But um, we've worked with social catering before and a few other catering companies. So that's kind of nice, you know, because yeah. what we try to do is – take all of the work out of it, Mm -hmm. but still have it like a really unique experience. So it's not like a regular birthday party, you know, it's picnic style. You know, it's something that not a lot of people have done before. So can they be in, obviously they could be in your backyard, the person's backyard, but can they also be in public places as well? Yeah. Um, We've done it probably at every public park in Tallahassee. Um, a few of our favorites, I would say, are like Dorothy B. Oven, the Greenways. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we've got a couple little other spots that we like to keep under wraps, you know, can't give all my secrets away. <laughs> 
Is there anybody else doing this? Do you have any competition? Oh, probably. You know, we've really got it down to a science and that sounds so funny. Anyways, but, you know, it takes a lot of work. Like when you look Mm -hmm. at it on Instagram and stuff, you think, you know, you think, oh, I could do that. But like just sourcing everything, it's expensive. Like, honestly, it's probably even though they are luxury picnics, you know, and have a luxury price tag. In the end, it is, you know, more affordable to book with us than trying to buy all of that stuff on your own. Oh, yeah, you could never do that. I mean, one of those world market umbrellas is like $200, you know? That's probably half your picnic. So were you surprised when you initially, you you know, your sister, you know, you you liked the idea when your sister presented it to you and Mm -hmm. you decided to start doing this? Have you been surprised at the... Um, the popularity of it and how the business has been growing? Or did did you always think it would be that way? Yeah, definitely surprised. I mean, I I really didn't have any expectations going into this. I, I think I really just thought it would be like a little side hustle. And now it's kind of consumed my life. So you're still in school. You go to FSU yeah, now, right? Florida State, yeah. And you're still working at the bank? Yep. And doing a bunch of other things. And you're things. doing – and – And you freelance social media. We didn't really talk about that, but you help some, are they businesses or organizations? So, I mean, I've done it across the board. I've done it, you know, for personal clients, like who just kind of want a little boost. Mm -hmm. And I've done it for nonprofits like Rethink Energy Florida. Um, When I was interning my freshman year, I helped them out with that. Um, And then now I do it for small businesses like Magnolia. I still do their social media. So I was like really focusing on that and I had a clientele and now I really only do it for a handful because I've kind of had to stay, take a step back right. from that. Okay. So I didn't really let you answer the question about surprise about the success of the business and how it's taking off that, that you did not see all this happening when you first heard the idea. Oh no, no, I definitely did not. But it's kind of funny too, because at the... I would say last summer when we were, you know, at our height of the busy, you know, busy season, because like summer is the perfect time to have a picnic. Right. Um, I was still in my head thinking like, we need to book more. We need to book more. We're not booked enough. You know, I was like, you know, we need one every single weekend. And we did. Um, But I was like, and we need them weekdays too. So I think that's just kind of my personality too. Like when I do something like I want to be the absolute best at it. It's probably one of my toxic traits, but, you know. Right. Do you want to scale to the point someday where you don't have to be at every picnic and you can have teams of people doing stuff? Yes. And so it's funny that you say that because I actually just hired two amazing girls. They both go to Florida State. Um, And they – I hired them at the beginning of – February. So they're kind of at the point now where they can do like smaller picnics on Mm -hmm. their own. Um, And that's been really nice, you know, like on a Sunday or Saturday morning, like to just kind of give them what they need and have them go and do it. I'm like, oh my goodness, like, (laughs) that's a great thing. I don't have to go set it up. Yeah. Yeah. So hopefully that'll just continue and they'll be able to, you know, scale up and do more things on their own. Right. All right. So we talked about you being in school still at Mm -hmm. FSU. And what are you majoring in now? Communication science and disorders. Okay. And is your goal, is it your goal to go on to graduate school after that? Yes. Okay. And what do you want to study? um, So communication science and disorders is the undergrad program for speech language pathology. Okay. So that's what the grad program is. is And so you want to be a speech pathologist? I do. Okay. I've got two... Well, one is my cousin and then one is my aunt that do it. Um, And then I have just some family friends that do it as well that actually I think all three of them went to FSU and did their grad program too, which is kind of funny. But, yeah, I've kind of always had that plan probably since middle school that that is what I wanted to do just from – seeing them do it. It's just, it's a great career path. I mean, it's kind of like a teacher, but kind of not. You know, you can work in a school setting or you could work in a geriatric setting and a clinical setting. I mean, you can do a lot of things with it, um, helping people that have a communication disorder. Um, So I liked the kind of flexibility and range. And I really liked that I could work in a school setting and be on the same schedule as my kids and work with kids because I love kiddos. Right. I'm sure people tell you all the time, 
you know, they're kind of in awe or ask you how you could have accomplished so much at your age at 19 or now 20. Yeah. And you've talked about your parents, you know, putting that drive in you when you were young about um, achievement and excellence and doing your best. So, but that only goes so far. You're an adult now. You're, yeah. you're a married woman. So what is, <laughs> you know, what is your drive now? What keeps you charging so hard forward and that drive that gets you up every day to try to accomplish so much? That's a great question. I My mom actually like asked me something really similar the other day. She was like, you know, she's like, do you feel some kind of pressure or something to like, mm. you know, speed track your life? And I was like, no, I don't feel pressure. But she said something um, in the little introduction video when I got the Marjorie Turnbull Pinnacle Award. And she said something like, I've always had a vision for my life mm -hmm. and the way that I wanted it. And I think I've just always done things, whether that was consciously or subconsciously, to make that a reality. So, like, I've always known that I wanted to be married and have children and that I wanted to be successful in whatever I was doing. I just always wanted, like, whether it was through advocacy or, you know, just anything, I just wanted to, like, make an impact in some sort of way and, like, not necessarily, like, be a famous person. I don't want to, you know, <laughs> I, I don't want to be, like, a famous person or, like, a singer or whatever, but I wanted to be, you know, like, some somebody that people would remember my name, you mm. know, even if it wasn't, like, the whole world or anything like that. I just wanted, you know, some people to, like, read about me, I guess, and be like, wow, like, that's a cool chick, you know, like, she's <laughs> doing things. And I just have I always wanted that growing up and so I guess I just had that vision for my life and I've you know I'm very type A so I just always kind of set myself up and made sure that things were in place to happen that way. Right. Yeah. I hope that answers your question. Yeah, no, know. that's great. And I also understand that some of that drive was nurtured a little bit in middle school. Mm -hmm. Through uh, Samantha Vance's program. Ladies Learning to Lead. Yeah, Ladies Learning to Lead. L3. So, yeah. yeah. So tell me about that experience. So my eighth grade year, again, you know, my mom on the email newsletter, she saw it in some sort of email chain. And she was like, um, you guys need to apply to this because you could get a scholarship to attend. And I think it would be really great. So she made us fill out the application. Mm -hmm. That's another thing. Um, Do it yourself. About my parents. Yeah. Right. Always did it ourselves. So we filled out the application, Mackenzie and I, and got the scholarship to go. Um, and it was like a weekend long thing. You got to stay in the dorms at FSU wow. and, you yeah. know, wear your little business clothing. And it was just so much fun. Um, I made friends there that I still have um, and met Samantha there. Um, and me and her just really headed off. Mm -hmm. I love her. She is one of my mentors. So you stay in touch with her now? Oh, yeah. Yeah. We actually started a business together in the summer that the pandemic hit, um, and that kind of fizzled out, you know, we, I think we're planning on selling it or something like that. I had always kind of been like a brand ambassador for Ladies Learning to Lead. Like I did a lot of television appearances and I worked different events, you know, like kind of representing mm. the organization. Um, I did this, I did like this little introduction video for Samantha when she won some sort of TCC alumni association thing. Mm -hmm. And I said in that video, I was like, Miss Sam is a lady to know. Like if you, <laughs> you know, like if you're going to know anybody, you need to know Miss Sam because she will open doors for you. She'll give you the tools you need. And I think that's just always been the best part about having her as my mentor is like mm -hmm. her opening certain doors for me that I probably wouldn't have access to if I didn't know her um, and giving me just tools to really be successful. Um, you had mentioned winning the Marjorie Turnbull Pinnacle Award for um, from 850 Magazine and Roland Publishing, mm -hmm. given to, I want to quote this here, a w young woman of extraordinary promise. Yeah, isn't that crazy? That's pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, tell me about winning that award. That That is quite an honor. And Marjorie Turnbull, of course, is 
a a loved, respected, and um, just really admired person in our community. So that's a great honor to be linked to her I in know. this award. Yeah, I was shocked. I was um, when Steve called me. I was just like, "Are you sure?" No, I'm kidding. No, I didn't say that. I said that in my head. Um, I actually thought it was a spam call because it was a Panama City number and we had just come from Panama City mm. Beach um, and this Panama City number kept calling me, calling me, calling me and I was at the bank just working my nine to five um, and I was like, man, you know, like let me check this voicemail and he was like, hello, I'm blah, blah, blah with Roland Publishing. I was like, okay, that sounds familiar and um, he was like, you've been nominated for the Marjorie Turnbull Pinnacle Award and I was like, okay, Marjorie Turnbull Pretty sure I know who she is. Googled, Googled right. what it was. And I was just like, oh my gosh, this That's is a real. real. <laughs> this is a real thing. And yeah. I, um, as I'm like, you know, it's all hitting me. Like, I just started crying. My boss, Linda, comes out and she's like, are you okay? What's wrong with you? I was like, I've been nominated for an award. And she was like, that's so great. What's wrong? And I was like, I don't know. Um, so I called him back and yeah, and he was just, we set up the interview and everything. And the whole experience was just so surreal. Yeah. And just getting to, you know, getting to meet all of the other Pinnacle Award recipients, like they are such amazing women. Right. Um, and obviously Miss Marjorie Turnbull, like that was amazing. Yeah. So it was just really surreal and a great blessing, honestly. Yeah. That's great. All right. Two more questions. Okay. So Madison, looking back, what would you say is one thing or person that has changed the trajectory of your life up to this point? My husband. Yeah. When I met him, I, like, wasn't really in a good place, you know, like, mentally. Um, obviously, I was still, like, you know, that driven, very hardworking person. But I had kind of lost myself maybe in the crowd I was hanging out with um, and certain things I was participating in. So when I met him, he was like oh, no, you know, like, the girls I'm with don't do those things. And, you know, and just, like, really uplifted me, you know. Mm -hmm. And he, you know, he's had hardships, too, as far as, like, we both kind of struggled with mental health. Mental there we health. go. Mental yeah. health. Right. Um, and I think us just both meeting each other, and especially in the time of life we did, we were both at very low points, but – um. I think kind of the way we coped with it was like not necessarily acting that way. You know, like everybody that met either one of us, you would have never guessed that we were right. struggling well, in some sort of way. People are trained to hide that. Yeah, right? exactly. Um, and so I think we both kind of saved each other in that sense um, in the way that we are both able to uplift each other and push each other to be better. And I think that if I didn't, meet him, I mean, I don't know where I would be today because the crowd I was hanging around and, you know, the things I was doing just were definitely not going to put me on a path to where I am today. All right, final question. The podcast is named How I Got Here. So we've talked about how you got to this point in your life. Mm -hmm. Where do you think here will be for you three to five years from now? So I would say in five years, hopefully, financial freedom, a kiddo, and, you know, just, I don't really know where I'll be. You know, you probably will have started six or seven other businesses. I know, then. I know. Well, that's what I was about to say. I was like, <laughs> I don't know where Tallahassee Picnic's going to be because I have like all these other ideas that I want to do and, um, you know, whether it will turn into something else or, because, you know, at the end of the day, these picnic, it's a trend, you know, these right. pop-up picnics is a trend. So, um probably chasing the next trend or um or creating one or create oh you know it trendsetter um and hopefully you know working as an slp in a school setting or something like that or even if i'm not doing that you know i'll i always have to be doing something so i mean you bet your bottom dollar i'm going to be doing something i'm going to be working in some sort of capacity right. <laughs> um and what that is going to be Probably, I don't know. And I think that's what's so fun, you know, is that, like, life's not predictable. And I definitely didn't think, you know, like, as a junior in high school that I would be, like, 
going to college and married and, you know, running a business and working another job. So I think that's just what's so fun about life is that it's unpredictable and you can make it whatever you want to be. That was Madison Zabala. And if you're looking for a creative alternative to a traditional picnic with someone you care about, I encourage you to check them out. You're sure to win some brownie points. Thanks for listening to the show. You can subscribe at Apple Podcast, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. And while you're there, please leave us a review. It really does make a difference. Thanks to my amazing staff at Fiori Communications, who pick up the slack while I'm working on these podcasts, and to Troy Bloom for composing our theme music. You can hear more of Troy's creations on Facebook and Instagram at Troy Bloom Music. To connect with the podcast or suggest a future guest, follow us on social media or email us at podcast at fioricommunications.com.